In this tutorial, we're going to touch on the areas we've not yet covered, such as hyperedit, matrix editor, cycle, and solo. You could view this tutorial and possibly the environment one beforehand as tasters for the forthcoming video, in which we will show more advanced techniques for these editing windows and everything and anything you ever wanted to know about scoring. This tutorial is an introduction to some of these features. We'll show you where they are and briefly what you can do with them. You can always experiment yourself as they use many of the techniques we've shown you in other areas of notator logic. Hyperedit first then. Select the fader sequence we recorded in the environment tutorial. Now open Hyperedit from the window menu here. And you'll see the volume displayed graphically across the screen, each bar representing a volume event. This facility has multiple functions. Basically, it's another editing window that can display all types of MIDI data. Principal uses might include drawing or displaying volume changes, or displaying the notes of a drum track, creating a more visual method for editing. By selecting the pencil tool, you can add new volume data, and by using the rubber tool, we can erase information. The video song on your disc contains a number of hypersets for volume and also a general MIDI GM drum map. You are, of course, free to create your own hypersets with any number of hyper definitions displaying any number of MIDI data types in any combination. I think I'm having one of those any days again. Let's have a quick look at the matrix editor now. Again, uh, select a sequence from your arrange page. We'll take the uh, baseline from this uh, folder here and open the matrix editor window. Here we can see our notes displayed with reference to a piano keyboard on the left here. We can use the mouse pointer, pencil and eraser tools to move, extend, insert and erase notes. Lastly, cycle mode. Let's go back to the arrange window with the transport on it, like so. There we go. This is a great feature for helping you input and listen to data. Cycle makes the computer cycle around the two locator points set here. So we set that to 1 and the second point to 5 and turn cycle mode on the computer will now cycle around those four bars. We've of course still got our volume happening there, so that's why the piano disappeared. Alternatively, you can uh, click in the top bar ruler and actually draw on your own cycle. This can sometimes be quicker. So click and hold with the mouse. And now we've cycled in a cycle around bars two and three. Once you've selected cycle, the computer will always start playing from this point. Lastly, but by no means least, solo. Solo, as it sounds, will solo out or alternatively mute all other tracks other than the selected one, enabling you to listen carefully to information within one specific area or track. Let's go into our intro folder and select the bass track, which is, and click on solo and press play. And there we are, just the bass part on its own. Very useful for editing and finding information in the tracks. Well, that's all, folks. First, my thanks to our ETV satellite stations around the world for their valuable contributions to this program. Notator Logic is used by professional musicians all over so you should feel confident in owning one of the best computer sequences around. On behalf of everyone here in the UK ETV studio, I'd like to thank Sven and all the crew at eMagic in Germany, Labyrinth Video Manuals for their excellent work, and Mark from Sound Technology, well, for everything. Lastly, but by no means least, thanks to you for watching. Uh, excuse me? Sven? Anybody?
logical. Have, 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 have you ever had a dream? No!